What did you think was missing from Manchester United tonight, Roy? Um, you know, Ollie looks a bit shell shocked there. I think it's been a tough few days. You know, the performance tonight nowhere near good enough. On the back of the Leicester result, when you start playing your squad players, you think are good enough to get Man United back to winning league titles. Absolutely no way. I think all United's shortcomings have been shown up in the last couple of days. And um, tonight, just not enough quality. All he's mentioned there, giving such bad goals away. But the other worry, again, I think Liverpool could have scored six or seven. We've praised United the last few months, but this, this squad is so short of competing, I think, with Man City to win the title. And it's just been, all their shortcomings have been shown up the last few days. And that's why I think Ali found it really difficult to even speak to. I, I, I think he's shell-shocked from the four goals tonight and even the poor performance the other night against Leicester. But is that schedule not a factor, Roy? Well, let's get, well, I think when you're playing for a big club, you have to you have to accept that. You're going to play a lot of games. You're going to be playing two, three games a week. But he made changes the other night. It's not as if he's asked players to play two games in 48 hours. But when the, the performance against Leicester, you know, they'd one shot on target in 90 minutes. And these are the players who are your backup players, your squad players. But the squad players have shown to be to be short, particularly if you compare them with Man City. And that's who you have to compare them about because that's who you're competing against. But I think Man City are so far ahead of this this United squad, it's scary. And I think Ollie will reflect the last few days and think, we need three or four big players to come into this club in the summer. Three or four, at least. And of course, we all know that's easier said than done. The recruitment's got to be right. He's got to be given money to spend. I just look at the performance tonight of the two midfielders. Mac Tomlin is a good, honest player. They've got Fred. As long as them two players are playing in midfield for Manchester United, they will not be winning any big trophies. OK, they've got the Europa League final in a few weeks. That's only, they're only not fine because they, they come up short in the Champions League. No, let's not be kidded on by that either. I, I'm really... The last few days, of, I, I can't believe how, how short Man United are. And Ollie mentioned it again tonight about they're chasing the game, they need a goal. They bring Matic on instead of Van der Beek. You know, it's not good enough. They've spent a billion pounds, close to a billion pounds net in eight years since Fergie packed it in here. And I think that is as much to do with the anger that the supporters are showing that they're not sitting top of the league, they're not you know, in a European the Champions League final. And I think what Roy is saying, you've got your second string against Leicester, didn't look very good. You've rested your, your strongest 11 as you see it. Not very good again tonight. And it's, you know, the scenario for Man I'm sort of rub it in, it couldn't get any worse for them. Last year, Liverpool, arguably their biggest rivals, historically, win the league. Year before that, Liverpool won the European Cup. So they're seeing this this football being played. This year, you know, what, five, six miles, is it five miles, four miles from here? You've got a team that's won the league and look, and could possibly win the Champions League. And I think there's a lot of anger born out of that. It's not just about the Glaziers, it's about where this, this group of players that are, that are here at Man United right now, they're, they're not good enough. Well, they would say they were making progress on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, you're, I mean, you said at the top of the show, you said to Roy, you know, good news about Cavani signing new contracts. He's 34. Now, good news for Man United fans would be they, they're making a real effort and a real statement and going by Harry Kane. That would be really good news. Cavani keeps Man United in the top four. Kane would, win, could possibly win you the league. You know, they talk about recruitment. Yeah, recruitment's important. I, I hear less and less about development. I hear less about improving players. I hear about less, you know, about the academy. Can you bring players through? Well, there's Mason Greenwood. He's not doing too badly. No, exactly. But Marcus that's, what I'm, that, but that's well. what I'm saying. So they are there. You haven't got to keep buying fortune, you know, buying players all the time. There must Jamie, be time in... doesn't. Time yeah. is not well, your about, friend when you're a manager of a football club. Though? What about them? Yeah, yeah they're, they're good. good. They're good enough. They're good enough to play for Man United, and they'll only get but, better. But, but the Man answer United, isn't always buying players, Graham. Man you know, United you bought in, you, you bought in Van de Beek for forty million. What's he done? Man, well, I come back to it. You know, the Glaciers are much criticised, and we've gone over that argument many, many times. Where I see, where I see Man United's problems since Fergie's packed it in, and David, is it David Gill went. They, the owners, have said to Ed Woodward, you know, the money's there. And they'll give plenty of money to success, a succession of managers. But Ed Woodward, or whoever was making the football decisions, were not football people. And that's why they've ended up spending net close to a billion pounds and they've got a group of players that they've got. And that's not the Glacier's problem. They have made money available. Yeah, they've taken big dividends. But if it was a case of taking dividends and then that money not being forthcoming for the managers, I get that argument. I'd get that argument because I've been a manager. But if you're a manager of Man United in the last eight years, you cannot say that the Glaziers have not funded you. 
But the fans would talk about the fact that they bought the club with debt and and, yeah, and so on and taking money out of the football that, club. And we had this discussion not a legal the other day, deal. That, that That is a fact of business life. Leverage, you can do that. This is, this Man United, you know, the interest rates are the lowest that historically they've ever been. You go back to the early 90s, they're up to close to 15%. So right now, being leveraged isn't the end of the world. Man United, arguably the biggest football club in the world. But you can't... I'm not, I'm not saying it's you a You can't perfect... tell Manchester United fans to be happy if they're not happy. They're not no, happy not, with this ownership. Not, and they're argument. never going to be, Graham. That's argument, pretty clear. But I'm, but I'm saying, if on football terms, if I had been a manager here in the last eight years, I, as a football man, as a football manager, could not complain about the money I've been given to spend. And I don't think any manager who's been here in that period since Fergie went can say... They've not supported it. Jose was pretty unhappy. Well, <laughs> That's spent, another argument. But we, so, but we talk about progression for Man United, and I've given Ali plenty of praise over the last 12 months and some of the players, progression, but finishing second it is still not good enough what for Man United. What about winning Europa League final as well? No, you know, that would have been the bottom of my list of priorities at the start of the season. The bottom of the list, because remember at the start of the season, you're in the Champions League. It's, it's, it's like fail, failure is rewarded in football now, and it, that's what the Europa League is. Failure because you've not achieved at the highest level, the highest level obviously being Champions League in Europe. So, I, I, At the start of the year, where would you have took that, though, Europa League in second place? I, I wouldn't have been interested in Europa League because I think you're in the Champions League, but I would have put the FA Cup more of a priority in terms of getting your hands on a trophy. I, I go back to my own experience at United. I don't think we ever spoke in the dressing room about development and progression and... God forbid if anyone ever said second in the league is good. You know, do, you know. Doesn't it depend where you're coming from to get to that point? Isn't this gradual progression back to where they want to be? Yeah, but, it, but we've, the, the, Man City and Liverpool have raised the bar over the last few years. This idea of finishing second, it's not as if they finished second and City won it the last day of the season. Man City won the league the last, you know, they won it two months ago. The league's been over the last few months. So United have gotten a comfort zone of going, well, we're second, they've had a few plaudits. And I've been one of them. But all of a sudden, the last week or two, I'm looking at this Man United group of players and their mentality. Even tonight, nowhere near good enough. Nowhere near. Good. This group of players will not close the gap on Man City next year. No chance. And Liverpool will be better next year. They'll have their defensive play, so they'll look a better side. Chelsea are going to go again. They're going to be stronger. So it's not going to be as easy as probably what it has been for United this season. The mowers are out. I think that's our cue, fellas. Yeah.